Good evening. Tony Blair has given a stark warning to Labour not to repeat the mistakes of the past. He says the party is unlikely to win power again if it moves further to the left of British politics. In a rare intervention, the former Prime Minister claims the party, which will elect a new leader in the next few weeks, is in danger of rediscovering how to lose. There are four candidates standing for the party leadership. Mr Blair's speech comes amid growing momentum behind the left winger, Jeremy Corbyn, as our political correspondent Ben Wright reports. Labour has picked winning leaders in the past, but it has also chosen election losers, quite a few of them, leaders who couldn't convince voters to back them. But he could in three elections. 21 years and a day after being elected Labour's leader, Tony Blair made this plea to a party poised to choose another. Don't for heaven's sake move back. If we do, then the public won't vote for us not because our thoughts are too pure, but because our thoughts are out of touch. By moving back, he means left, as it did after Mrs Thatcher won in 1979. The Labour Party persuaded itself that the reason why the country had voted for Margaret Thatcher was because they wanted a really left-wing Labour Party. <laughs> this is what I call the theory that the electorate is stupid. And what about those who want a more traditional leftist politics? When people say, you know, well, my heart says I should really be without politics. Well, get a transplant, because that's just dark. <laughs> Blair rarely steps into Labour politics these days. But with the left-wing MP Jeremy Corbyn seeming to surge in the leadership race, Mr Blair's comments have bite, and his audience approved. We're not going to win again by shifting left. We're not going to win again by thinking the public were wrong. Shifting too far to the left has not worked out in the past and I think Blair has the right idea. But across London, a very different view. Being denounced by Tony Blair after all the disappointments of that government isn't going to damage Jeremy at all. Ken Livingstone was here to back Jeremy Corbyn, an old ally. For many years, Jeremy Corbyn has been a fairly lonely figure on the left-wing fringe of the Labour Party. This sort of attention is a sign of how extraordinary this contest has now become. He's a contender. Some say he may even get the leadership. An MP since 1983, Jeremy Corbyn was close to Tony Benn. New Labour, he was not. He has long campaigned against nuclear weapons, the monarchy, and for an end to austerity and cuts. And that is the crux of his pitch to Labour now. Do you really think the sort of left-wing platform you're putting forward holds the answers to Labour's problems? Look, all of us know somebody that needs help. All of us know somebody that needs health care. All of us know somebody that's going through a mental health crisis. All of us are an accident away from needing a benefit system that sustains us. I think we need an inclusive society. Tonight, the candidates gathered for another hustings. I'm just a supporter. Thank you well very done. much. Good luck. Thank you very much. Earlier, two MPs who nominated Jeremy Corbyn in order to invigorate this contest said they wish they hadn't. But Mr Corbyn's message is resonating, and none of the other contenders have yet decisively grabbed the prize. Within a few weeks, this rebellious outsider is suddenly centre stage, potentially Labour's next leader. So what we're seeing is a struggle for the soul of the Labour Party and its problems are huge, wiped out by the anti-austerity SNP in Scotland but clobbered by the Conservatives in much of England. Now many in Labour are clearly very enthused by Jeremy Corbyn's approach. Others think it's the road to electoral oblivion. Partly because of Iraq, Tony Blair remains a very divisive figure within Labour. The question is, does this intervention galvanise support in the end for Jeremy Corbyn or jolt the party into picking somebody else? Ben Wright at Westminster, thank you. Language they understand. So what's going Traditional on in the Labour values Party, in a modern setting. Get back to policies. Stop these advisors who are causing all the abuse between the candidates. I've you been mean people like John McTurnan? Mr John, so this is a kind of, you know, you gov doing a, a service to to sleepy Labour voters to wake up or and smell the coffee. Though? Or I mean, is it? There may be I mean, many people who well, want to let's bring leader. Say, exactly. What does this say? This one single poll say? Right.
The first thing it says is the moronic MPs <laughs> who nominated Jeremy Corbyn to have a debate it includes John need, Crudders, need their heads yeah. felt. They need their heads well, felt. They should be ashamed of themselves. Well, hang on, felt. hang on. You can say that. But then what you might say, this is actually... Morons. Yeah. They're morons, right? Uh, that's the first thing. The second, the second thing is... <laughs> but these I are actually... There are actually... Do you do accept there are Labour members and indeed people in the country that do support Jeremy Corbyn? I mean, it's not a chimera. Political, political parties are full of suicidally inclined activists. Okay. And clearly some of right. our members are suicidally inclined. Well, John, who the heck is John McTurnham? I mean, he advised in Scotland, we lost. He invited in Australia, and we lost. He wasn't in the Blair camp of any substance whatsoever. And there he is, being brought onto the broadcaster and speaking with some authority. He has no authority. Morons, stop this abuse. Let's calm down. Let's think about policies. And candidates should now move into the areas of policy. And that's why Jeremy's doing so well. They know where he stands. But you don't want him to lead the party. No, I don't think it would. Look, I so said... So why did you put him on the list? Well, I, I said... I want to, him to be on the list. Well, I did. I said to Jeremy, he came up and said, thanks for encouraging people to put me on the list, John. And I said, yes, I think you should be. It's a party decision now, not MPs. It's the parties make the decision. Let them have as wide a choice as possible. You've got... Um, uh, you've got... You've got... <laughs> You got one of the candidates from the right who is obviously getting her case across. Well, we got Liz Kendall on the right. Well, Liz we got Andy Burnham. We right, got Yvette right. Cooper. Well, you've got Liz on one end of it, if you like, and Jeremy on the other. The party's got a real choice in debate, but let's start debating. And I support Liz staying into the debate as much as Jeremy. Let Even though you don't party. rate her. Pardon? Even though you don't rate her. No, I want her arguments to be heard. I wouldn't vote for her, no. Who but would you she, vote for? Pardon? Well, I've already said I'd vote for Andy. And you're, you're sticking with that. I don't abuse any of the other candidates. Let the party make the decision. This morning with, with the vet, you talked about gender balance. Let us debate gender balance. I would prefer the best, whether it's two men or two women. Let's start opening up the debate. That's what the party want to hear. They want to hear what did the candidates stand for, not a lot of the language we're getting at the moment. What happens to the party if Jeremy... And it's not impossible, is it? It clearly isn't impossible. Unlikely, most people say, but if... Jeremy Corbyn wins. What happens to the party? Well, I think you should ask yourself how are we getting into this position about Jeremy. The polls are telling us that we're panicking because some polls that told us the wrong blow in the decision well, put in the, the polls election. aside, but there uh, no, is no, clear... no, no, no. It's an important point because it's influencing decisions. He is now getting out and getting all this support. And the say. constituency but parties the... are supporting him and many Yes, of them. yes, but so are the candidates. The real argument is the press have decided they certainly don't want Jeremy. The playing that role, most of it the Murdoch press had always played that role. They pay for these polls, it's Sunday Times, Times and the Sun, right? They're doing these polls and basically it makes it look as if it's an overwhelming run for Jeremy. I don't think for a moment it is. I think they are voting against He's austerity. Got, got the unions as well. I mean, well, yes, but I think they're voting good. against one man who says I'm against austerity. I quite understand that. And then we have the silly decision in the leadership to have this vote on the welfare reform or to avoid a vote. Well, now, that Cooper setting... agreed that would have been a mess, hasn't it? So, but look, here Well, we it are. was a mess. It was a decision made by Harriet. She had no authority to make it. The Shadow Cabinet was against it. The PLP was against it. She wasn't even going to have an amendment. But look, You don't that's approve history. of Harriet Armand, Pardon? do you? I think Harriet got it wrong on it. I think uh, interim leaders are not there to make that decision. Margaret Beckett was an interim leader, but she didn't make the fundamental decision to support almost the Tory position. I mean, she's exceeding her authority, court. basically. She did. Well, she didn't have authority to do it, frankly. Right. All right. I mean, this is a major uh, decision for candidates. Now, the candidates need to be clear where they stand on welfare, on expenditure, on economy, on housing. Start talking about where you stand on the main issues. So I'm going to say, basically, get your advisors out of the way. They're the ones coming into the studios. You don't use their names half the time. There are one or two that do. Get them out of the way. Get Become calm over the debate. Get talking properly about it. Candidates rise to the issue of policies. Let the party see what they say. All right. And Liz is doing it. She makes it clear where she stands. I don't think the party liked the message. Jeremy is giving a different message. And clearly many of them seem to like what he says about principles and about austerity. So let the party decide. It's not the MPs to decide. All right. And the MPs, the, party... the MPs tried to limit the people who would be in the debate. And, and now we've got these four who represent a very broad swathe. If the party, let me repeat the question I put to you earlier, if the party does go for Jeremy Corbyn, 
What happens to the Labour Party? Well, if the party elects any one of these candidates, they have the authority of the party to lead the party. Now, I hear... So it wouldn't be a disaster? Pardon? It wouldn't be I, a disaster? I don't think it would be a disaster, but that really isn't a point. I personally well, don't think they'll do it. Point. I said to Jeremy, look, I think you should be in the debate, but I won't vote for you. I don't think you'll be the best do of the candidates. Do you think he wants to be the leader, leader, even? Because we've heard him no. say in the past <laughs> that he doesn't really want it. Well, he's not that kind of ambitious to be fair. You always hear people, he's kind, he's nice, and he is a great guy. I work with him a number of things. But he's not the leader of the Labour Party, but that's up to the party to decide. I can give you my view, but to talk about having a transplant, if you sort, Jeremy, is an absolute term of abuse that's unacceptable. Have you Calm told Tony Blair down. that? Pardon? Have you told Tony Blair that? No. Well, I often tell him and told him on a number of things, but I haven't, he just came out in that programme. I was a bit shocked that he said it. But for no, Tony, you're getting pressed by the right-wing people. You got elected not on a left-wing ticket or a right-wing ticket, and I was on that team. He got it because we knew what we were going to do. We had an agenda different to the government. Our agenda doesn't look too different when you start supporting the welfare reform bill, right? So let's get real. Calm down. It's the party's decision, not the MP's.